it's all changed because of COVID. And because of COVID, there isn't that kind of outlet of live music yeah, at the that's moment. that's right. But pre-COVID, um, a lot of tours were getting pulled at the last minute. Of mm -hmm. people like, and I don't want to name names because they can always mm -hmm. sue me and get back to me, but people like Lana Del Rey, was, <laughs> where, where, who's a great artist, brilliant artist, you know, and lots of, of pop artists, the, the, the so-called, you know, singles artists, um, you know, um, were not selling their tickets because people actually weren't really interested. There was no translation from mm -hmm. huge amounts of YouTube views or Spotify streams and anything out to an arena. Yeah. And so a lot of those mm. gigs were, 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 you know, greedy yeah, promoters would put the money in and they yeah. paid the money to the artists and all of a sudden those gigs have had to be pulled because of a lack of interest from wow. the public. So you've got 16,000 tickets to sell at the O2 and they've only sold 2,000. And so they've they, 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 they basically they've got... So, so the alternative is, is that you put a U2 tour on, another U2 tour, believe me, it will sell out within uh, four hours, it will be full. So yeah. that's just the way it is. Or, or Queens of the Stone Age. Queens of the Stone Age. Well. You yeah, talk right. about U, any great yeah. live act, and exactly. a Coldplay, of course, will do that, yes. which, yeah. which I don't really and consider. Yeah, yeah. Muse. Yeah. These, yeah, are, yeah. these are the giants of, yeah, that's true. of music. Yeah. But I think we, yeah. we hit here like a topic of uh, interaction because all those bands you're mentioning, they their audience, they, they're used to go to the gigs. They, they grew up with the live music, with the interaction. But when you, when you go to new artists, you know, they're followed by, uh, many times just by, by the kids, you know, my, my kids. I have a nine-year-old uh, boy and 11-year-old uh, daughter. And w when I see how they consume the music and, and who they listen to, it's, uh, they, they love the music, they love the songs. But I'm not sure if they would l love to actually go and see them live. They never speak about it. Mm. They're listening all that music, and they they're listening to all the you know the the hype stuff. You know all that you know the music you hear the TikTok and and the the, the new is the better, right? All the hype. You know I, I have no idea you know what what what's going on in their world. You know and they always teach me. They Do you know what? In a way, it's it's interesting because like because of the way culture's gone, especially with kids, where it's all like you know, one song here, one song there, yeah, yeah. and you jump in around and the tension span's quite short. The idea of spending a whole evening watching the concert by one, like imagine your kids, if they've got a song they like, they're not going to spend an hour listening to one artist, are they? they yeah. That's what a live thing is all about. Yeah. You're going to listen to this whole band's catalogue or whatever, and, and yeah. you're, gonna, you're not going to... Whereas I think with kids now and with... with, with Spotify and all that, it's all about jumping around. You jump in, you don't want to, and that's one bit of it. And the other thing, I think I grew up going to gigs, small gigs, <coughs> watching local bands, that kind of thing. And it's all about the experience. You know, you go yeah, out, yeah, exactly. You it's maybe you see some friends, you have it, yeah. you, you're in this environment where it's really loud, it's late at night. It's kind of blasting it's you. Dangerous. It's yeah. It's, it's dangerous, baby. It's like yeah. And what's, your, what's the it's best gig you've been dangerous. to? What's the the, the, the most memorable memorable gig? Yeah. Do you know what? I'm I'm just. It's an interesting question, but I'm I'm remembering back in the nineties. Um, Buddy Guy came oh. to came to Cape Town, and he did a he did like a unadvertised, like kind of secret gig at the Hard Rock Cafe. Oh wow! And there was only like a very small amount of people that could get in. Yeah. And I wasn't invited. I was only probably about like 18 or something at the time. Not to say, not to say that I'd be invited now. Um, but I remember I was a big fan. I was really into my blues and stuff. And I went down there not having a ticket, not knowing how I was going to get in. I just went down there to kind of like think maybe I'm going to blag my way in there somehow. I didn't know how or whatever. And I kind of hung around and all I remember was somehow I blagged my way in. There was a big crowd of people and then suddenly I was in the Hard Rock Cafe and Buddy Guy was fucking playing in his spotty shirt. <laughs> and it was so like, <laughs> it was just, I remember being, I was really, really, really young. I was massively yeah. into yeah. my blues and I had Buddy Guy records and it was kind of before he, he was sort of, you know, because he was obviously around since the, I don't know, was it the 60s? Or 60s. Yeah. yeah. But he only really became sort of mainstream famous, I don't know, in the 90s. 
if I remember correctly. Yeah. Mm. And he was still pretty much under the radar. Anyway, that was what I it was one of the most memorable in gigs. South Africa. Yeah, 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 yeah. One of the most memorable gigs for me because yeah. suddenly I was in this really, really small little hard rock cafe with Buddy Guy there, and I'd taken the piss and Amazing. just sort of somehow got in. I don't even remember how I got in. Amazing. Yeah. You know that when we were in LA, we uh -huh. saw Buddy Guy. Oh, really? In August. Uh, he, he was like yeah. 90 or something. How he's always, yeah, he's, he's 90 He years. is himself. I, I mean, I love crazy. Buddy, but he, he is himself sit. the he biggest blagger. Sit, yeah. He's such a blagger, that guy. Oh, he's yeah. got like like two two licks, yeah. and he's just milking them oh, for like yeah. 50 oh, yeah. maybe, the, maybe the whole thing, Gav, was that, you know, it's like no, one, it's one, those, one of those dinners where you go to where you think you're splitting the bill and then some other, someone else pays and it's fucking great, you know. <laughs> but the fact you went there, you didn't never even buy, you never paid for a ticket, you know, you just got in and blagged <laughs> it. Do you know it what, was it wasn't a, even it about... It made the experience great for you. I would you, have happily you know? paid. And those two licks <laughs> were like a thousand because <laughs> you didn't pay. I would have happily, happily paid, but, you know, it wasn't even, it was like VIP only sort of thing. And yeah. me, VIP, and you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'll tell, tell you what my favourite gig was, uh, yeah. pretty much of all time. Um, and weirdly, it's an O2 gig, and I hate the O2. Yeah. But I saw Leonard Cohen for the second time oh, at, wow. the, uh, at the O2, and I was oh. a guest. Um, so, I, and I was sat really near the front, and and this was about a year, maybe a year before he died, you know, year two. Amazing. And I was a huge fan, and and you know that. The O2 was full, 16,000 people wow. watching. This guy was the same mm. age as my dad. It was just looking like a, the, like a fucking saint. Amazing. So, you know, he had a brilliant band with him. And there's, and what he did is this kind of incredible thing when a soloist did. He sort of went on mm. his knees and did that praying symbol when you know someone was playing a solo. But I looked around at one point and 16,000 people were fucking loving it. Oh. And I just thought, you, this, you are my hero. Yeah. You know, si 18... 16,000 people uh, and you. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 16,001 yeah. were loving yeah. that experience. That's so. amazing. Yeah. yeah. What about you? For me, it was, the the it, was, it was the punt guns gig at Subterranean. Yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would have been if that was my favorite gig there. ever. Oh, was yeah. myself. <laughs> me too. <laughs> For me, the, 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 that was like one of the most important gigs in my life. You know? <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, I definitely remember the, the, the first gig I got drunk. I, it was a punk <laughs> band. It, it was a, it was in a, in a, it was a dangerous gig, you know. It, and I remember that uh, we were at the high school. I was like sixteen or something, maybe fifteen. You know, I was really young, you know, and y too young to enter that that gig. And there was playing this Czech uh, Sex Pistols kind of vibe band, and it the 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 club was just full. And I got really drunk. I, I like I got too many beers. And I just, I remember I was climbing on, on stage and I was just, you know, jumping, you know, to the crowd and surfing. And I was like fearless completely because I, I had no idea what I'm doing. And uh, there was... Can you remember any of the songs? Uh? Oh, of course not. No, 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 no. no. They, they, they had this one song which you can't, it, it's so obvious, you know, you remember it. You heard it once, you know, and remember it's about the machinery on the, on the field, you know, tractor. It's in Czech, you know. Oh, and and it's the same in English, actually. Yeah. You just say it slightly if you say Tra tractor. Tractor. Not tra yeah. Tractor. Yeah. <laughs> tractor, yeah. That, that's a <laughs> tractor. It sounds better, though. It's it's tractor. But it sounds, tractor. sounds way better. Tractor. 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 <laughs> it's, it's just, you know, the Combine jangling. harvester. <laughs> exactly. Combine <laughs> harvester. <laughs> that, that was the song, you know. That's that definitely an <laughs> odd well, time, actually, right? Well, actually, there was quite a famous <laughs> song called... Um, what was that song? Was it JVC? What was what that... Um, yeah, is that is that a, a vehicle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there's a song. My, me and my dad driving on the thing. I played it some two, three days ago. It's such a oh. great tune. JCB, my, J my JCB, dad that's on it. Yeah. The, on the JCB, Who's it by? I can't remember what the guy's name is, but actually listened to it only three days ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But in Czech they say JCB. Yes, it be. <laughs> JCB. JCB. So for me, my, my favorite gig. My yeah, sorry. We, uh, we no, no, no. I just want to put it there. It's uh, Led Zeppelin, uh, 
six no. months before John Bonham's death. No yeah. way. You, yeah. What? You, you've seen yeah. the Allen Stadium, oh. Zurich. He's there quietly and then what? suddenly he comes out with a, yeah, I saw Zeppelin. Sorry, guys. Bonham. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and just and killed like, it, like, yeah. boom. You know. And, and like, actually, on the night, he was sort of a guest to the band and they kind of <laughs> nodded him and he came out with the guitar yeah. Yeah. and played a solo along with Jimmy Page. Yeah. Just want to give a shout out to my main man, Gigi, in the crowd. Hello. Second best gig, I told you that, actually, is actually Peter Gabriel. Gabriel in Geneva with Simple Mind opening for them. Okay, great. Yeah, uh, and that's how the first time ever I heard about Simple Mind. What year was that? 79 or 80, something ridiculous like that. Yeah. You know, like uh, it was. Proper. Well, it's funny because I saw Simple Mind, obviously, we, we've done five albums with them. Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're, yeah. we're, we're close friends and collaborators. But yeah. I, uh, before we really got involved, I went to see uh, Simple Minds, who we called The Minds. We went to see yeah. them. I went to see uh, them play in. Uh, the Reading Hexagon, which is a, yeah. a really kind of, y you know, <clears throat> it's a kind of theatre venue, if, if theatre size venue. It's so like 3,000 people. But it was quite clubby, and they did their own support. So then that's what they started doing. So they're doing, well, okay, we'll do one set, and we'll do a break, and we'll do another set. But it was absolutely brilliant. brilliant I mean, yeah. I came there and went, wow, what a performance, mm. you know. And it was actually the right size venue for that band as well, because they're doing... Y you know, um, you know, songs really that are not their biggest songs, but you know, someone somewhere in summertime, yeah, yeah, yeah. glittering price, and all those other amazing songs they got from that period. You know, yeah. One of the best minds gigs has to be the Barrelands. Remember, we, you know, uh, they had a song on their last record called Barrelands Stein. Barrelands yep. is a famous, as an iconic venue in Glasgow where they're from, where they started out, and then you know the venue itself went through all kind of stages of in their history and closed down and it got, you know, it was derelict or I can't remember all the details, but basically when it came back and then they sort of had the song about it and when they, before they were, were famous, they used to dream about playing the Barrowlands and then obviously when, when they, when they sort of came up, um, they, they played it, but then it closed down and then they eventually went back and started their tour at the Barrowlands for their last record. Um, and we went up to the to the show, and it was, it wasn't necessarily their greatest. Uh, actually, it was. I thought it was it quite a poor gig. It wasn't actually. necessarily their really? greatest yeah, gig because it was the first one of the tour. Yeah, and it was they the first were just gig of the in. tour. It was yeah. still a great gig, but what was great from about our point of view, it, it was great to be there. What was what was great about it was just seeing them playing the Barrowlands and with their home crowd. It's like a football team playing yeah. playing their home home turf, you know. Mm. And so from that point of view, it was just great. It was just such a great gig. Mm. Yeah. Right. I think. Um, yeah, we. I think we we killed it there. 